This presentation will explain the Research Model Canvas. The Research Model Canvas is inspired by the Business Model Canvas in the book, Business Model Generation. The book says, a business model describes the rationales of how an organization creates, delivers, and captures value. The Business Model Canvas asks nine essential questions about every business. From the left upper corner, the questions are 1. Key Partners 2. Key Activities 3. Key Resources 4. Value Propositions 5. Customer Relationships 6. Channels 7. Customer Segments 8. Cost Structure and 9. Revenue Streams The Research Model Canvas also has 9 questions 1. Partners 2. Resources 3. Problems 4. Innovations 5. Contributions 6. Team 7. Activities 8. Expenses and funding and finally 9. Impacts and vision The purpose of Research Model Canvas is to ask several essential questions about each research project. The answers can help the members in the research team, as well as outsiders, understand the most important components of the research project. The Business Model Canvas has been widely accepted for years. The Research Model Canvas is pretty new and untested. Thus, we are not sure these are the right questions to ask. We expect the Canvas to improve gradually as more and more people try it and express their opinions. Now, let's get into the details. At the center of the Canvas, these are three of the most critical questions. What are the problems? What are your innovations, and what are your contributions? Let's focus on the problems. What are the research problems? Why are these problems important? What has been done solving these problems? What are the deficiencies of existing solutions? What are the research problems? This is the most important question. Without understanding the problems, it is not possible finding solutions. This is also, perhaps, the weakness part for many beginning researchers. Most students are used to answering questions in homework assignments and exams. These questions are usually well defined and have correct answers. Most students are not trained to describe problems, because the problems are set by professors. A research problem must have reasons why the problem needs to be solved. Understanding the reason can help clarify the problem and identify the true meaning of the problem. A research problem can be quite big, including many smaller problems. For example, a research problem can be design an autonomous vehicle that can drive from the North First Street of San Jose, California to Powell Street of San Francisco between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. on a weekday. This problem contains many smaller problems, for example, 1. Detect traffic lights, 2. Stop when the detected traffic light is red, 3. Detect the car in front, 4. Decelerate when the car in front slows down. Each of these problems can be further refined into even smaller problems. For example, detect traffic lights can be divided into detect traffic lights during daytime. Detect traffic lights during nighttime, detect traffic lights during rain, detect traffic lights during fog, detect traffic lights behind a semi truck. A research problem must have clearly defined metrics to measure success. Thus, design an autonomous vehicle is not a research problem because it does not specify how success is measured. A research problem must have clear definitions to evaluate success. Beginning researchers make some common mistakes. One mistake is a problem without a clear way of measuring success or failure. Consider John F. Kennedy's Moon speech on 1962 September 2nd said, Will be done in the decade. Putting a man on the moon. The success of this statement can be precisely measured. The time, the destination, the moon, and the payload, Amon. Kennedy did not say, we are going to explore the space. The success of this statement cannot be measured. 
Is shooting a rocket to the Earth's orbit a success? To the Mars? Is sending a robot to the moon a success? Another common mistake is to mix motivation and problems. More than one million people are killed in traffic accidents each year, based on the data from World Health Organization. Many accidents are caused by human errors. Reducing traffic accidents is a good motivation to design autonomous vehicles, but reducing accidents is not equivalent to designing autonomous vehicles. It is possible to reduce accidents by other methods, such as better driver educations, discouraging drunk driving, disabling texting during driving, better vehicle safety requirements, etc. The third common mistake is treating the deficiencies of existing solutions as the problem. Some students say, the research problem is that existing solutions are too slow. This is not a research problem. Understanding the problem is particularly important if a planned solution does not work. Imagine that you are hungry and want to eat. The problem is that you are hungry. Going to your favorite restaurant is a possible solution. Unfortunately, the restaurant is closed for renovation. The problem is not the restaurant is closed. The problem is that you want to eat. This problem has nothing to do with this particular restaurant. If you can distinguish these two, you can find a different solution by going to another restaurant or maybe cooking a meal at home. The difficulty of a problem is not the problem description. Some students say, this problem is really difficult. Or, I do not know how to solve the problem. Or, I do not have real data to evaluate my solution. These are not problem descriptions. It is important to know what has been done in solving these problems and what improvements are needed among these existing solutions. This is another common mistake for beginning researchers. They have not done any study and they immediately claim, I am the first person in human history solving this problem. Unfortunately, these people get confused between ignorance and innovation. In order to know what has been done, you often need to read recent research papers. After describing the problem, you need to explain what new things can you bring? Research means creating something new, new to everyone on earth. You have to know what has been done so that you know whether what you are doing is new. Do you discover a new problem? Do you have a new solution? Do you have a new way to evaluate existing solutions? How is your method different from existing work? How much improvements do you have? This part is sometimes called the intellectual merit of your research. The next set of questions is about your contributions. What differences does your research make? Does your research improve some people's lives? Who are these people? Let's imagine that you improve vehicle safety. Your contribution is to help travelers. If you have a better way to cure a particular disease, the people with that disease can benefit from your research. In many cases, Research results are delivered by published papers. You need to think about where to publish. Do you want to publish in a purely academic venue or you want engineers and practitioners to see as well? Does your research have any implication to society or policy? If so, you may want to publish in places where policy makers can see. How do you deliver your research results? The most common form is research papers. However, other forms become increasingly popular. The contributions may appear in the form of data, software, prototypes, patent. Next, let's examine the questions of partners and resources. In many cases, you cannot do the research alone. You need the expertise of some other people. They may have the knowledge, equipment, data or some other things you need. Partnership must be mutual. Thus, when you ask what your partners may offer, you must also ask what you may offer to your partners. Here resources may be tangible such as equipment, office, laboratories, machines. The resources may be intangible, such as data. Next, 
We ask the question about your team and what they do. What types of members do you need for your team? What knowledge or skills do they need? How will you train them? If your team includes many students, where do these students go after graduation? The activities question identifies what the team members actually do, where they do the research. Do they conduct experiments in a laboratory or interview people? Do they need to take field trips, such as going to oceans or mountains to acquire samples? Do they need zero gravity environment in space? After answering the questions on the upper part of the canvas, we can now move to the bottom of the canvas. At the left side, we ask the questions about expenses and funding. How much money does this researcher need? The budget may include the salary for researchers, the equipment, the expenses for field trips, and so on. Two related questions are where to obtain the research funding and the expectations of the sponsors. Some foundations will support research for philanthropic reasons. Some other sponsors may want to own or co-own patents. Some sponsors want to hire the talents trained by the research programs. At the right side of the bottom is the impacts and vision of the research. Here you need to answer the bigger questions. If your research is successful, what happens next? Maybe you can cure a common disease and save the lives of millions. Maybe you can explore deep space and figure out the origin of the universe. Maybe you can improve the environmental sustainability. These are often called the broader impacts of your research, the impact on society and humanity. If you are successful, what may happen 10 or 20 years from now? These nine essential questions form the research model canvas. I encourage you to discuss the canvas with your research team. By filling the canvas, your team will have much clearer understanding about your research. Please let me know what you think. Your questions and suggestions are appreciated. This is my email address. Thank you.